To wrap up the summer, we see you guys throw Kyle and Amanda a fake wedding. So how was that? Woo! We're getting fake married! <laughs> oh, I think we crushed it. I think that we're future wedding planners. Yes. You know, obviously seeing Kyle and his love for Amanda. I mean, I still, one of the greatest moments ever on our show is his proposal on the boat mm -hmm. at the end of season three. I still think that is one of the coolest, like most amazing things. Yeah. You know, everybody, everybody remembers Amanda's crying face and she's so happy. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes. It, it was probably the nicest, funnest, most like just happiest a night of the summer, I would guess. Yeah. I almost felt like guilty that we didn't like participate in it because I had already had my friends make us dinner for Kyle's birthday. Happy birthday oh. to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. And now they are like throwing this like mock wedding for us. I was like, what did we do to like, do we just need to be nicer to each other more often? Because clearly, like, people are willing to do stuff for us if, like, we're just getting along. Yeah, if, we're, if we're good, people will set <laughs> like, parties up. Yeah. It was just really, a really cool experience to be able to throw them something special. It wasn't even a chore, like, decorating for it because we were so excited. Like, I had fun doing it. Here's the plan for tonight. Ceremony. Uh -huh. Come down. Cocktail over on the side. We're gonna move all those lawn chairs. Luke is gonna put up the altar right in the front down there. This was like the theme of all themes for them to celebration of their love, but we get to all be in and on it together. I really loved getting the house ready for it and that Robert could be a part of it. Robert has been gracious enough to offer to prepare some things. Yep. Really? Uh -huh. Are you available June 18th, 2021? <laughs> <laughs> he was our chef for the entire evening and that was really cool to see him do his thing and be like kind of just like one of us so it was really special in that way and also to see them you know i know it was fake but it it felt it felt kind of real from the beginning of the day people were like taking it very seriously like it was like wedding planning stressed out carl was the wedding planner very stressed out carl had his panties in a wad the entire day <laughs> He became a bridezilla. Carl became a bridezilla. What are we supposed to be doing, Carl? Uh, setting up. <laughs> I like put us put a balloon somewhere, and someone was like, "No, it doesn't go there." And I was like, "Oh my god!" I was just. Did I miss oh. the memo though? Because like, I in my head, I was like, "This is gonna be like we're having like a mock wedding, but it's gonna be like a fun wedding. Like we're not taking it seriously." But like when the f cake arrived and it was like a three tier cake, I was like. It was the classiest thing we've ever done. I thought we were just gonna get drunk and Carl was gonna be like, you guys wanna get married? And we're gonna be like, yeah, and then we just keep drinking. No, no, no. They're coming. Oh, oh look at this. Oh my God. Oh. When I walked out there and like seeing the people that we've had like so many ups and downs with and that our actual family, like they're gonna be in our lives forever. We're gonna have all these memories with them. And to see them all like standing there looking at us, like I was just like in tears. Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome family and friends. <laughs> to just have Carl at the head of, at the head of that beautiful like white, like runner down to that altar they made him being the most supportive friend throughout all the ups and downs of our relationship i was like i feel like i feel like we're getting married i literally feel like we're getting married i'm like i'm tearing up she's tearing up i do <laughs> will you amanda take this man to be your wedded husband in 2021 me too when you saw amanda's emotion and, and kyle's emotion when they saw everything that everybody had done come together you could really see it touch them and I think that it's just a testament to how much everybody really does care about each other and loves each other in, in, in this crazy environment that we're in. Um, at the end of the day, we, we, there's a lot of love there. It was also really nice to have it feel like our friends were like excited and happy to like celebrate us. Yeah. Because like it hasn't always been that way. I'm sure we can be so annoying when we're like arguing and bickering. Nobody likes the couple that argues. It makes it uncomfortable for the whole house. So it felt like so nice that our friends were willing and like excited to like do this for us and celebrate us and like just be happy for us because we were so happy. Yeah, the fifth summer we are is so a charm. Happy. We are still so happy. <laughs> Watching them, like you realize that's true love. 
and it was so beautiful to see them interact with each other all season and then and then like watch them like faux wedding and they're like both like crying you know and you're just like this is so cute like I just like want to be I just want to be in this faux wedding too we would have been getting married like a week later it was one of those like summer send-offs where it was like drama free and like love was in the air and I was loving it. It also was like probably one of our most epic end of summer parties. I mean, it was just, like the it cake was, and the DJ and all the food and the champagne. It was like the we wind are, was whipping through people's hair. We are classy I mean. AF right now. Like we went all out, like to the point that I'm like, Kyle, looks like you kind of invited me to your wedding accidentally. <laughs> looks like I don't need to go to the real ones. <laughs> Before the faux wedding, we see Paige and Carl help you two get ready, and you ask them to be a part of your actual big day. I had ordered, like, ten dresses, because I am now having to wear a white dress that's not a wedding dress that's long to this, like, ceremony. So I'm like, how do you find a long white dress that's not a wedding dress? And none of them came on the day that they were supposed to. And I was like, holy shit, what am I going to do? COVID. I, I don't have anything to wear. And then Paige walks in with a dress in two sizes for me. I had gotten Amanda a dress and I know how like particular she is with dresses. So I had no idea if it was going to fit or not. I put this dress on and it like fit me like a glove. Oh my God. I love it. Do you? Yes. Okay, good. And I was like ready to cry. I was like, you just saved my life. You are my best friend. <laughs> She had the wrong shoes on and I like took my shoes right off and was like, here, wear these, like, it'll be great. And I felt like it was such a like bridesmaid duty that I had to do. And then she sat me down and asked me to be in her real wedding. And it was, I've never been asked to be in a wedding before. And I didn't think I was going to get emotional. And it was the best moment all summer. And I would love for you to be a bridesmaid on my wedding oh day. My <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just her and I sitting there crying, but like happy tears of, oh my God, you're getting married and I'm gonna stand up there with you. Like, I just can't wait for that day. Her and I, like, we're always gonna be able to like text each other and be like, what's up? And it's gonna be like, no time has passed. Like she's gonna be like one of my girls for, forever. So I was like, this is the, this is the time. Like you've, you've proven yourself to me. You've passed the test. You've never been a bridesmaid. <laughs> I've never got married. <laughs> and I love Paige and Amanda together. Kyle um, loves her too. And I think that's also important that we, I have people in our wedding party that like mean something to both of us. Yeah. And, and Carl obviously means a lot. Shoe in. Carl was a shoe in. Yeah. I was like, if you don't ask him, I'm going to. Well, there was a little bit of a, you know, Carl has, like I said, he's just been our, our biggest supporter from day one. So just to have someone like Carl in my life, absolutely, I want him up there when I officially tie the knot. You are my best friend, and I want you to be my best man. Thanks. Love me, buddy. Kyle had asked me to be uh, in his wedding. I'm going to be a co-best co man with his brother, which is really cool. And like Paige said, too, I mean, I was definitely emotional. I mean, I've been a, a big supporter of them from the beginning. Flattered. I'm honestly flattered and honored. Like, no, absolutely. Not. Like, emotional, man. I, no, I know. Listen, that. man, I love you. It's real life. I mean, they're really getting yeah. married, and they really love each other. And for me and Paige, I think to be a part of that is so f***ing special and so yeah. amazing. Um, it's, it, I, I'm just, I'm so excited. You know, for, for this particular little fake wedding, I mean, I secured Kyle his white blazer. Um, so I, I try to help him, you know, look as fresh as he can and, you know, make, make the guy feel comfortable and confident on, on his fake wedding day. And I think it was a good practice. I think it was a good practice for when they actually do get it done. You um, only get one fake wedding day and you got to <laughs> do it right. A little toast to Kyle and Amanda. More Kyle, more Amanda, more life. Congratulations. To fake weddings, but real friends. At the end of the summer, it seems like Lindsay and Steven are back on track. But the other day, Steven and I drunkenly got back together. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. But then they get into another fight, which tests their relationship once again. When you have a big, big 
breakup or you hit a low in your relationship, because we can attest to this, you either emerge stronger or you know it's not gonna work. All I remember was just like convincing Steven not to leave the house again. What I'm just happened? like, dude. So we're just like having fun and like drinking and like I'm drunk, of course. And he basically is just like trying to control my, control me. Water. I'm sorry, what? Let me get you a coffee. He was like, yeah, I know you need to drink water. You need to like not be like this person. And I was like, <laughs> that's, not, that's not gonna work. I mean, why is it that you're so boring sometimes? Like I can't yeah. live my Life. He tried to leave again. He tried to run away again. Oh, yeah. Mother her. Like, grow the fuck up. Shut the fuck up! Did you hear? No. I am out. You guys, Danielle is such a good friend. She actually stole his suitcase and, like, was like, no, you're not fucking leaving this time. I, can't I deal am with not this. letting you leave this house. I cannot deal with this. I literally, truly went downstairs to their bedroom, grabbed his everything, and his work laptop was in there. Like, he wasn't leaving without that thing, that's for sure. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so I took the laptop and the baggage and everything and I put it in my room and I was like, I closed my door and I was like, it's what you have to do sometimes. <laughs> Bro, you left once. Lindsay doesn't like when you just like run away. Yeah, Lindsay was like, he leaves, he always leaves. And like, then I'm like, Steven, you're literally trying to leave literally again. Literally <laughs> like the easy way out of like anything is to leave. And if you guys are talking about like actually moving in together, you probably should like rethink that if you're still trying to leave because you will have nowhere to go to. <laughs> yeah, I just remember in, I had like this beam of light where I managed to talk some sense into him and he didn't leave a second time. Dude, I did nothing wrong. Okay, dude, relax, dude. Stop doing the whole bomb leaving thing. Dude, I'm tired of this shit. And then the next morning, like, I tried to have his back, in a sense, like, in the conversations that I had with, with Lindsay about it. Am I the problem in this relationship? Yes. What? There has to be a reason why you're pushing him away. You know, it was really hard because I'm not used to having anyone but Lindsay's side. And in that moment, I kind of pushed back on her. Right. And I also wanted them to get back to get like to stay back together. You know, I, I'm at that point with Lindsay in her relationship. I'm like, it deserves the try. Like, you know, they've been so much through so much this entire summer that it deserves like a real try and i was going to do anything even if it meant um hearing steven out and being on his side for once to do that that's how i felt that conversation that we had was was very critical for me it showed me that like i have abandonment issues we all know that like i've, I've been very open and clear about you know, like my mom leaving and like starting a new family, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm triggered when people leave me. I wind up like pushing and pushing and seeing how far I can push them to see if they will run away like or not. Like testing them. Yeah. I like thought I was through those abandonment issues and, it, and what that conversation with you in that moment taught me was that I wasn't through them. I need to just stop like, pushing you to the point where you feel like you need to run away from me. But I also need you to know, if you ever run away again, it's over between us. You know, I love you, Hubs. You know, you know I love Strav. I, 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 I want Lindsay to be happy. I want Steven to be happy. And if it was them being together and that's what they wanted, then, then as a friend, that's what I want. You know what I'm saying? And if it, if it doesn't work out, then then be happy without each other as long as you're happy.